uh, day 12 we're heading uh, west we're two days from Riyadh which was the target for Philby in 1917 uh, like Philby we're looking forward to um, today arriving at the waterhole the well of uh, Abu Jufan which is protected by an old fort so Reem and I are walking um, just across a gravel plain there's low low sand dunes around us the sand has changed color really from the white sand of the coast to a redder color here as we uh, as we approach Riyadh um, and we're walking at about four kilometers an hour we hope to uh, rendezvous with the camels a little bit later today under the shade of a tree and then uh, we will ride the camels into Abu Jufan like Philby did in uh, 1917. So Rima it's day 12 we've, we've got uh, two days left and uh, then like your grandfather we'll take a break because when he arrived in Riyadh he uh, he broke his journey he met Ibn Saud and they had long conversations for many days and then he proceeded west to Jeddah, which is what we will do in January on leg two. So, if you just reflect back over the last uh, over the last twelve days, very varied days, um, are there for me? It's just one big highlight, I think. But I mean, are there any particular things that stand out over the last few days for you? So many, I guess, Mark. Um, other than the obvious, being on this route and, and the stops that we made and the sites we visit visited. Um, one main highlight for me would be meeting the locals and just having our little chats with them. They're amazing, we, they're so genuine and it's so interesting to see how excited they are about the expedition and learning more about it and they're asking about uh, the book that we're following. So just, just meeting them and having these little chats with them is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, how about you? Yeah, well, I similar to you actually. Yeah. I, quite, I just love spending time with these folks. You know, it's, uh, I mean, you just mentioned they were asking you what you were sleeping in last night because they'd never seen a small tent. Yeah. I mean, it's just just fantastic. Just so such amazing generosity and warmth, and uh, which is what you know, all the desert travellers, Thesiger and Philby, wrote about the, the, the hospitality and the warmth of the local people. But, uh, you know, I think one of the one of one of the I mean, I love going to the meteorite crater. I thought that connection with Philby, the lost city of Wabba, that's yeah. a fantastic story. And, uh, but for me, actually, I think one of the highlights has been seeing you, seeing, 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 seeing your reaction to, you know, when we came under the tree, yeah. where, where your grandfather took that photograph, where the guys prayed, and, uh, and seeing your reaction uh, when we found the spot at... Uh, at, at the, the palace, in, uh, palace. Ibrahim Palace, yes, in, uh, in, in, in our food. That for me was really special. And, uh, You're very kind. Uh, well, no, it just, it just, what just makes me feel really, uh, really pleased that with what we've achieved. It's just fantastic. Absolutely. And yeah. I have to say that I'm very happy about our morning bus resuming now. Ah, <laughs> yes, me too. Back in the routine of walking, which, yeah. which there'll be much more on leg two, I think. Oh, yeah. But uh, so talking about leg two, I've been starting to think about it now because we were so preoccupied with getting leg one moving. Yeah. Didn't really have too much time to think about leg two, which is much longer from Riyadh to Jeddah. Um, would you do anything differently, you know, just in terms of what you've packed or preparations? What, what, what would you do differently for leg two? Because we've got kind of six weeks now, haven't we? Yeah. Six week break. I will definitely pack, pack my thermals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the extra one. Uh, yeah, other than that, I think we're pretty much uh, we're pretty much prepared for this one. But I know leg two will be a lot colder, so uh, definitely more thermals. Um, and yeah, I think that's the only thing that comes to my mind. Yeah. You, anything in particular? Well, I think uh, like you, I do certainly need a thicker sleeping bag. I'm sleeping in two oh, thin sleeping you're bags. Sleeping? Well, I've got two thin sleeping bags now, which means if it gets a bit cold, about three or four in the morning, I yeah. can just wriggle into my second one. But yeah. That's not going to be enough in January. I'm going to be shivering really, so I need to bring a thicker sleeping bag for that bit. The photo on top of the sleeping bag really helps. Well, I, yeah, I use that as a pillow actually. But, uh, <laughs> I don't want to give up my pillow; it's just too comfortable. Fair but uh, Fair 
because we'll start at, I get Riyadh's at about 2,000 feet altitude and we'll, yeah. so we're going to do a, a reverse of what we've done. So we're going to start high and end at, back at sea level in Jeddah. Yeah. So it should in theory get warmer as, as we progress. Yes, I need to get my trekking poles sorted out as well because they're, uh, they're completely trash now. They're about 15 years old so I need to uh, invest in a new pair, maybe, maybe a couple of new pairs of socks because my toes seem to be sticking out the bottom of I've got some big holes in my socks. Yeah, I like that sock anymore. Well, I'm quite attached to it. Yeah, but it's, uh, 